talk to you about the five service amalgam or the amalgam only or also known the cuspal covers restoration. So really it's taking a lot of amalgam and creating a direct crown on the tooth. And we primarily use this, especially in the Canadian Forces, for our mandibular or uh, posteriorly endo endodontically treated tooth. And this tooth here is actually part of what we've started. It's called the Amalgam Olympics, Amalgam Only Olympics in Pet, Petawawa. Beautiful Petawawa. Um, not so much in the winter, but in the summer. And what we do is we have all the captains, brand new, come in. And we, they complete an endodontic therapy on an extracted tooth. Just learning the wave one gold technique, uh, really simplified, predictable on an anterior tooth, a premolar, and then a molar tooth. And then we practice and post on our WhatsApp group an example of our <clears throat> of their amalgam only. So um, I got them to watch this video and they've given me some tips. And I really want to create this because I remember when I was a young captain, I was very hesitant to do these things because they're painful. Uh, unless someone shows you kind of a couple hints. So that's what this video is about at the start. Anyways, and we're going to talk about the principles of why we do this. And kind of this is from an old timer talking about this is how I talk to my patients about cracked teeth and just having specific restorations. So if this is our tooth, we're looking front to back. And we complete our endodontic access. And what I usually talk about with patients is that um, we have flexing. And after thousands of cycles of biting, we get the, on our inclined planes, we get these oblique forces causing flexing of our tooth, which then causes a fracture down the middle of the tooth. So to prevent that in our endodontically treated teeth, because they're subsequently uh, arguably less weaker, but also there's less proprioception, uh, less pain from the patient because now there's no nerve. No pulp tissue so now they're more likely to continue to use their tooth uh, in mastication and you know I forgot to say that this restoration is a great restoration because it's on endodontically treated teeth it gets we get cuspal coverage right away to prevent that fracture down the road and it also gets our patient fit now yeah it's ugly as heck I mean no one wants a silver crown but I'll tell you uh, there's a, a large portion of our military population that actually doesn't matter. Doesn't they don't matter? It, they don't care about the aesthetics. They just don't want to have to come back to the dentist. And this is a great restoration to do that. And what I tell our captains here is that save using crown preparations, save that time, those time slots for the teeth that really need it that you can't do this on, such as crack, vital cracked teeth. You know, reversibly inflamed. You can cut a crown preparation. Apply Gluma, apply your dentin bonding agent, place your crown down and see, you know, salute your crown and cement your, bond your crown. See if you get um, res resolution of their symptoms on a vital cracked tooth. And also for aesthetic anterior cases to do crowns, don't clog up your schedule. My recommendation is don't clog your schedule doing crowns on molar teeth that are root endodontically treated, unless of course there's an aesthetic issue. So back to kind of the specifications of this preparation. We need to remove at least two millimeters of the occlusal plane. So don't, don't go cheap on the uh, occlusal reduction. Everyone usually does. So, you know, make sure you go two millimeters. And one of the tips that my buddy Major Mood taught me was to round out any of these corners. And what that does is it prevents like a sharp angle, uh, making carving these restorations a lot simpler because it's less likely to fracture off that piece of amalgam. Now let's talk about interproximal reduction and what we're going to do is we're just going to make, we're going to break the contact really simply. And these pictures are from Captain Sulen and she kind of gives you a, a great idea. She is an amazing artist here in PET. So we get our two millimeter reduction, you know, make sure you go with the flow of the tooth just to kind of give you some a resistance form when you're um, carving. And then here's breaking that interproximal box and it's really conservative. You only have to break the contact to get your band down. Don't try to do it without the breaking breaking of the contact because this piece will actually, if you don't have if you don't have this for resistance form during carving, you're gonna break that off. Just take it from somebody who's tried to do it many times and is very unsuccessful at it. So I just started breaking the box. And I'll just use, you know, a 330 burr, which is a 0.8 millimeter diameter tip. It's really conservative, and this prevents this 
you, I mean, again, it gets you gets your band down. It allows you to get your band between your teeth, and it also gives you the resistance form. So when you're creating, uh, you're you're carving your amalgam, it doesn't fracture. So without further delay, let's uh, take a look at a clinical example. <laughs> 